Um, he is so awesome. I'm going to read a little introductory um, thing about him, and then we'll turn the time over to Larry. Uh, Larry Sespooch is one of the youth storytellers who tells his stories with film, music, and lectures. Larry grew up on the Uinta and Array Ute Reservation in northeastern Utah. Um, he served in the Vietnam War as radio man third class in the U.S. Navy, and he gives talks on Native spirituality concepts and history. Larry created the Ute Tribe Audiovisual Department, one of the first tribal production groups in the States in 1979. They produced over 600 films for the Ute Indian Tribe on the culture, language, and history. During his 23-year tenure, Sespooch also served as the editor for the Ute Bulletin Tribal Newspaper and did public relations for the tribe and was coordinator for the tribe in the 2002 Winter Olympics. Filmmaker Sespooch has been a part of the Suntance Institute family for 28 years. He served over 12 years as Utah Humanities Public Square speaker, presenting Utah history through Native eyes as one of his many topics. He is often called on by his tribe to represent their viewpoint. The filmmaker left the tribe in 2002 to create his own production company through Native Eyes Productions. Today, Sespooch continues to con produce documentaries telling Native stories. His latest project is utetube.org, the Ute tribe's main source of multimedia media, historical photos, films, and history on the internet. We are so excited to have you here today, Larry. Um, I'm gonna turn the time over to you and I will monitor the chat as you speak. So if questions come up, I'll stop you and let you know, but the time okay. is yours. Great. Mike, Swaipanikayum, Iberunike. Hello, Salt Lake City County, Health and Wellness. Good to be with you today. Uh, my name's Sespooch. Uh, the name Sespooch means uh, white belly. My uh, great-great-grandpa had a big white birthmark on his tummy, and that was his ute name. And uh, none of us, to my knowledge, uh, have had that birthmark, just the old man. Uh, but that's where our name comes from, over around Montrose. We were relocated here in Utah, but... Uh, a bunch of us were over in Colorado. Colorado and Utah were pretty much our stomping grounds. And when the Spaniards came in in the 1600s, they call us Utah. And uh, when it came time for Utah to get its name, they dropped the E and just went with Utah. So it's named after our people. Uh, we were the first to acquire the wild Mustang uh, from the Spaniards who brought it. And so we were the first nation to have the horse and it went out from here. And uh, so that's pretty much the history in a, in a scoop. And uh, I'm just glad to be with you here today. I'm going to be sharing with you uh, about uh, our medicine wheel. Uh, medicine wheel is something that's common to all native people. And uh, when a creator made life or makes life, he takes uh, Mother Earth and water and combines those together to, uh, uh, you've all made uh, mud pies before. Well, creator does the same sort of thing, but he does it with uh, earth and water and creates all of us, human beings, all the animals, uh, all the plants, um, and uh, so we're all the same. So that's why Native people say all my relations, because we're all the same. We're all made the same, Mother Earth and, and water. And the last thing the Creator does is gives us part of its spirit. And uh, spirit is just energy. And uh, gives us that energy when we take our first breath in this life. And uh, as babies, and that spirit enters to the soft part of our skull. We call that the puwagat, the hole. 
and it's the energy that keeps our heart. I'm sorry. We make sure to mute ourselves. Good, Rebecca, and I'll have Raquel on 21, please. Is everyone on mute? You're good to keep going. Sorry. Oh, I just okay. <laughs> So it's that energy that keeps our heart beating throughout our life. And everybody's here for a reason. We all have a part to play in this big circle of life. And uh, hopefully we find gifts that the creator has given to us to play that part and uh, learn to use it and do good things with it. And eventually that heart's gonna stop beating and that energy, that spirit is going to leave through that hole that came in through. And we'll go back to that circle of life. And so the creator created this medicine wheel that is also the circle. And uh, as you can see through this illustration, that the mental, the emotional, social, and physical are all part of our being. And the spirit itself is there in the center. And that's what keeps this body going and uh, helps us accomplish what we're what we do in this life. Um, as you can see that um, all of these different categories that uh, go with uh, with uh, the medicine wheel. Uh, I'm going to show you a medicine wheel that I have here. And this medicine wheel you can see is made out of red willow. The hoop is made out of red willow to represent all of the plant people. The feathers represent the animal beings. And four nations of the world are here. We have the yellow man to the east. We have the red man to the south. We have the black man to the west and the white man to the north. So all nations are here as part of this circle. Creator wanted to show us how we're all related uh, as well as being all our relations. So he gave us this medicine wheel. And here in the middle center of everything is uh, where the creator is. We call the creator Sanoiv. Sanoiv is what we call the creator. And so everything evolves around the creator. <clears throat> we'll go with this one next. And as you see with uh, the illustration here, we have uh, four stages of life. When we enter this life, we enter in this first quarter here as babies. And uh, of course we live our life. And as you can see from the illustration, that's when we start to gain knowledge, through teachings, and then we become young people, adolescents here in the next quarter, and we go on to learn uh, discovery and uh, all the other things we learn as kids and start to do uh, venturing out and doing things on our own. And then this third quarter here, we become adults and we're still learning and understanding uh, because as adults, we become parents and we have to learn that whole thing as far as bringing up our kids and uh, uh, learning how to be parents. And lastly, we become elders here in this last quarter. And uh, regardless of when we leave this life, we all return back here to the circle of life uh, you all remember Lion King, 
uh, all things go back to the circle of life, and so do we. And uh, Creator says uh, to that circle of life and all those spirits, I have this life that I need a volunteer, and this life is going to go through all of this, and eventually a spirit will step forward and say, I'll take that. I will live that life. And so that's how we become all of the animals, plants, and of course, people, and uh, all the other creations the maker creates. Um, we'll go on to this next one. When we say, all directions, it's not only what you can see, uh, but it's the whole universe. And every direction has its own energy. And when we recognize each one, for instance, for our ceremonies, we usually have tobacco. And uh, for me, this is how I do it. So I acknowledge the east first where the sun comes up. And I say, for all good things from the East, and we call that Davach Moisi, Davach Moisi, Dawayak, for all the good things that come from you. And then I offer that tobacco and I do the same for all the other directions. So I acknowledge their energy. And uh, when we do that, it brings all those energies together to where where we are is the center of the universe, and that's where the creator will be. And uh, that's how we acknowledge all those directions. You'll find that pretty common in all of uh, Native uh, people, that they recognize all those directions. It's not just for this area we see, it's for the whole universe. And uh, this illustration probably best illustrates that. So um, you can see then that uh, different energies uh, come from a di each different uh, direction. We've got this next one here yet next. Now this one is uh, the one that uh, uh, maybe more uh, illustrates in the native uh, point of view uh, because it takes in the animals that represent those directions. So for the east, you've got the eagle for the south, you have the deer. For the west, you have the buffalo. And for the north, you have the bear. And all of those different categories you see there uh, fall underneath uh, those, those, uh, that direction. Give you a minute to look at those. You see, uh, there's the native language, and then to the to the right of it is the English. So you'll see all those colors pretty prominent on all native uh, things that we create because it acknowledges all of those directions. This will be the next one. Did I not give you that one? I don't think so. Mm, okay. Let's see it in here. We'll see. Well, this one, this one here also uh, is. Um, an offshoot of that last one where it talks about the different plants that are associated with all of the directions. I don't know how steady I can hold it to be able to read it, but um, 
everything is broke down through that medicine wheel to show how we're related to everything. So once again, when native people say all our relations, that's what we're talking about. We'll go with this one next. Yeah, in nature itself, you'll see through this illustration that uh, uh, Mother Nature also creates that medicine wheel. Uh, you'll see it sometimes through um, what the weatherman says is sun dogs. You've got the circle and you'll see that it will divide into a medicine wheel and those are very powerful times and so um, we try to do our ceremonies when the skies are red so that's like the sunrise and also the sunset uh, the redness we say is all our relations are up in the heavens looking on us and it's a very powerful time just like this one is We had someone in the chat say that is an amazing photo. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? This will be the next one. Okay. I was on uh, the series um, uh, Skinwalker Ranch one time um, and our people, it's in our honor reservation. It's uh, probably just a couple miles from where I grew up. And as kids, we always played down there, but I never noticed that it had a medicine wheel there until I went on to the show and they asked me about it. When I seen it, I recognized what it was. This isn't the one, but it's one that's similar to this. That's a natural one. And uh, I had our spirits talk to me and say, that's how they communicated with everything that's down there. Um, of course, you've got the extraterrestrials. We don't recognize them as, as anything different. Creator made all of us and gave us a spirit. And so we've always recognized them as relations. And so this was a means to be able to communicate with those extraterrestrials and all the spirits. And, and um, so the medicine wheel, you see it incorporates all those directions. And when you're in the center of that is when it's more most powerful because everything is just focused in on that center. That is the center of the universe. And uh, so when you're there and you, you, you pray, you are communicating with the creator as well as with all the other things that are that are there. There's what scientists call portals, but there are holes throughout the universe where things are sort of like black holes. You can go in and out of black hole you can't come out of. You just end up in there and and into eternity. But there are what they call portals where you can go in and come out of. And so there's nothing that governs what can come in and out of that. So a lot of times you'll get bad things that come through those portals. And some of the medicines and things we have are what take takes care of us so we're not affected by a lot of those bad things. Um, I'm called on by a lot of uh, non-Indians to come to help them because maybe something's come around that scared the heck out of them and, and rightly so. Um, there is good and bad in this world and in this universe. 
And all you can do is just take care of yourself, your home, and your being. And those things have been here through eons. And so uh, you can't change that. You can only just take care of your own, yourself. And that's what we do. Uh, but the medicine wheel is recognized universally. Uh, and so even the ETs know what that is. And if you look at all of the all pyramids and anything like that uh, that are associated with extraterrestrials having a part of, you'll see that this whole um, illustration is part of what they recognize, and that's how they've created a lot of the the um, temples and what have you that they've uh, been a part of. And um, a lot of things are possible through through that medicine well. We'll go with this one next. Okay, there you go. Okay, our youth people, not only do we recognize the four directions up and down, we also recognize the layers. And uh, for us, there are six layers. Um, to start from the heavens, we have the eagle, uh, which represents the north, and that's uh, the highest part. And then you have the upper world, which is the mountains, and that's uh, managed by the mountain lion. And coming down lower, you have the center world, which would be our level, our ground level. And that's governed by the wolf. And then the lower level is where the worms and all those beings are. That's the lower world. And in that world, the weasel is the, the one who governs. And lastly is the underworld, which is the snake that uh, governs that level. And so we recognize not only the four directions, but the different levels that exist. And um, so it makes for a interesting combination to to recognize all of those because we are just part of everything. Um, and uh, hopefully it will help you understand how even though we consider us human beings, a lot of time the ultimate, we're only part of the just a speck in the universe. And uh, so is everything else, but together we make up the whole. And uh, that's what the medicine wheel uh, helps us recognize. It's like this medicine wheel, uh, all of the ETs and their planets are part of this whole circle of life. And so they're all part of what the creator has made and all the other worlds that exist and all the other beings that exist outside of our little earth here. And uh, I think the extraterrestrials are here to see what we're up to because they don't want us to go up there and wreck what they've got going. We humans, we have a way of destroying good things. And uh, so I think they keep track of us to see what we're up to. And a lot of what they're doing at the, uh, the the ranch, I don't call it Skinwalker Ranch, that's something, some white man has come in and dubbed it that. And it has nothing to do with that. that the whole story is all made up to put it on TV and to exploit it. Um, so I have nothing else to do with the show. Uh, I told them that myself. Uh, consider it uh, cultural appropriation. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's my my spill on the um, 
all the directions and the medicine wheel and uh, the levels, the layers. And uh, I'd be glad to take any questions. I'm sure there have got to be plenty. I have a couple of questions for you. Um, sure. When you do the ceremonies, is it all for one purpose or do you do a different ceremony for different purposes? And when you do that, do you um, honor one direction more than another for the reasons for the ceremony? Well, like I said, we all have that spirit. So creator will talk to us through that spirit, but everything comes down to intent. So, um, um, maybe, well, earlier I did a presentation this morning down at uh, a conference that's going on here, and I talked about our medicines, and uh, so it really depends on what I'm praying for. There I was praying over the food and uh, using some of our sweet grass, and, and our sweet grass is what changes negative to positive because I wanted the food that we consume to help our minds to absorb all the good information that was coming through that conference. And then if uh, a couple of days ago, I was asked to go to a wake to pray there. Uh, so it's a whole different thing. And unless you're told to recognize one direction more than another, uh, you just recognize all of them because, again, you're talking about that's the center of the universe, and that's where the creator will be, and all of the energy will be. That answer your question? Yes, thank you so much. I love that. In the chat, we have a message from Bernadette. She says, thank you for this beautiful presentation. I'm inspired. I work at the base of a beautiful mountain we call Mount Olympus. Do you happen to know the Ute name for this huge mountain? She would like to call it by that name. Oh, geez. I'm working with uh, the American West Center. They're uh, trying to come up with all of the native uh, names for those. And I can't remember what that was. Uh, being a filmmaker, I work with a lot of our elders. And uh, sometimes um, um, they'll say words that I can't remember or I'm, I haven't heard. And so a lot of those names, uh, well, you to begin with is descriptive. And uh, um, so in you, whatever those, those names are, they're describing something. And so um, something in English could be this short, but in you, it's just this long because you're talking about what it is you're seeing. And uh, I know that's where the uh, springs are, Mount Olympus Springs. And so I would think it would have something to do with Ba. Ba is water. And so you would be describing what's there besides the Ba, the water. And, uh, but I know that uh, working through uh, the American West Center at the U, that they've got names that I'm pretty sure are all from all of the different uh, six Utah tribes. So I, I recognize some Paiute, I recognize um, uh, Shoshone. Um, we're all part of the same language family, Uto Aztecan. And we have a, an annual uh, uh, language um, conference, which is coming up here next week. Um, and all of the Shoshonean speaker tribes, we come together uh, to share the language and share what we know about the culture. And, and it's interesting because when they speak in their language, you can about recognize what they're saying. Oh, that's cool. And so 
So from way back when, when we were all together as one family, um, you can still recognize the words and what people are saying. If we were closer and things weren't so divided as they are today, we we were relocated to all these other places that we exist now on reservations, on reservations. And so we don't have that close communications that we once did. And, but we can still understand each other through the language. And uh, we've had a whole revitalization of the language. We've got uh, our first class of uh, youth speakers. They've gone through Fort Lewis College and have learned youth from elders that worked with the college. And so uh, it's going to be amazing to see what all happens here in the future because all of the three Ute tribes, us here, Southern Utes in Colorado and the Ute Mountain Utes in Cortez that uh, all had different graduates from there. And so they're all working in unison to create uh, uh, curriculum and uh, that sort of thing. So, uh, I'm very hopeful with the language because right now, as it is, probably those maybe 50 and older are the only ones that understand are still fluent. Um, and uh, we teach our kids in Head Start, and uh, we have a class in our charter high school, but you can only teach so much. You've got to have uh, total immersion to be able to hear it and respond and speak it so it's something that's uh, fluid. It's not uh, just one word. Uh, one word doesn't doesn't cut it. That's uh, for everything, yeah. yeah. Love that. Um, would you have a word for mountain that you'd use in general? If oh, sure. To... Okay. Yeah, we call it Gaive, K-I-V-E. Gaive, okay. Perfect. Um, the next question I have in the chat is from Brittany, and she says it's a two part question. Um, the first part is there are ways that we can help honor the land and the spirits that we interact with um, and are on each day. And then the second part is we are learning to honor and get to know our home better each day. Where can we get and gain more knowledge um, that could help us with that? Well, again, you've got a spirit, and I would just ask um, the creator, um, how can I, how can I connect with our Mother Earth better? It doesn't, it isn't something that's just total native. It's, it's all of us, and and you'll, if you're in tune with your spirit, you'll 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 understand what what you need to do. Everything is is a learning process. If you do something and it feels right, it's probably right. And if you do something and just now nah, it didn't feel good, it probably wasn't. And so it's a lot of trial and error, but there's there's nothing wrong with that. Um, that's how you learn. That's how all of us learn. And so um, I always just say if I've done something to something wrong to offend anything or anybody uh, I apologize uh, it wasn't intentional and uh, just forgive me and uh, that usually works and I forget the other part of the question it says we are learning to honor and get to know our home better each day um, where can we go to gain more knowledge about this uh, one of the things that uh, I would suggest is uh, taking an offering whenever you go out somewhere, and it could be anything. Um, what we use is tobacco, just loose tobacco, and just lay that there, and I offer this tobacco for a broader understanding of uh, whatever it is you want to know. and. 
it will come. Uh, the whole thing is just getting back in tune with the creator and, and your spirit and reconnecting. I love that. One thing I really loved that you focused on while you were talking about the medicine wheel is that we are a part of everything and that we're connected to everything. Um, for this last month in our program, we've been focusing on getting to know our home and connecting with our home. And I think as you come to realize that you're part of this huge, amazing world or universe um, and you connect to that, uh, you can connect to your home and to yourself better. And I love that you focused on that. Yeah. Yeah, that's like our um, sweat rocks we use in our sweat ceremonies. Um, I have one in my backyard that we have regular sweats every other Sunday. And that helps me keep grounded and helps me be able to share what Creator has. I, I consider myself a messenger. Um, I listen to some of what I say and I think, oh, man, that's not coming from me. But uh, when we leave this life, our relatives are going to put us back into the ground and we will become those lava rocks. We will become those stone people that we use in our sweat lodge. And so the cycle continues. And uh, so our body will become those those stones that we use and we call them our old people. We knew you in the lodge when we pour water on them and and so the old people are still blessing us and giving us their knowledge through the the sweat lodge and through the stones i love and that so, yeah. same same way with our firewood you know we go down and cut uh dead trees um to to most humans you think oh that tree's dead it's gone well, no, it's still firewood. It can still give us life. It can still give us, yeah, life to be able to go forward. And so it wasn't done. And it, it is done, like they say, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Then we're done. At least this life. I love that. We truly are part of everything. Um. The next question I have is from Mary, and she says, tell us about your events at the Uinta County Library. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I do these, um, I call them experience, uh, experiences because uh, I feel that people can't respect or understand unless you have some knowledge of, of a subject or an issue or whatever it is. And so every month I've been sharing something that's in uh, season with what we do. And so we're in the powwow season now. So last month I, I talked about the powwow. Uh, I talked about the bear dance in May. And so each, each month is something different. And uh, this coming month I'll be, or um, July, I'll be talking about our sun dances and what that all um, requires. And so you have some kind of understanding, like our powwow here, it's open to the public and it's free. Not too many powwows are free. And so everybody's welcome to come check it out. And, and so I talk to them about the different dancing styles. I talk to them about, uh, um, um, the best times to go to a powwow are pretty much the grand entry, so you can see everything all in one one shot. Um, and uh, the the presentations they're all recorded, and so they're all on Facebook. Uh, you want a county library's uh, Facebook page, so you can go on there and watch them wherever you are. Just log into their Facebook page and check them out. That's awesome. You went to County Library Facebook page. Right. And what date is that powwow? Uh, it will be 
July the 30th through the 2nd. Okay. That sounds awesome. Oh, I'm sorry, June the 30th to July the 2nd. Okay, June 30th to July 2nd. Awesome. Yeah. All right, the next chat we have. Oh, where is the powwow? At the library? Oh, uh, no, the powwow is in Fort Duchesne, so it's on Highway 40. And as you're, it's, it's between Roosevelt, Utah, and of course, Vernal, Utah. But it's about seven miles past Roosevelt going to Vernal. And you can't miss it. It's right off the road. You'll see all the cars and all of the dancing and hear the drums and everything going on. Yeah. We can probably find more information on the Uinta County Facebook, right? Oh. Uh, or no. Yeah, or else you can check out uh, the Ute Tribe's uh, Facebook page. Not Facebook, but just UteTribe.com. Okay, they'll have information there for yeah. anyone who wants to go. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so like I told them, uh, 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. is grand entry time in the evening. And 1 o'clock is grand entry time in the afternoons. So those are kind of the best times to be there and watch everything. And then they start to break down in different categories. And if you want to see that category, then, you know, you can hang out. But um, if you want to see the whole thing in, in one shot, that's a grand entry. Perfect. Um, I might say and... as far as the powwow, the word powwow, uh, I had a, I was filming, filming a Penobscot elder at one time and he said, uh, do you know where that word came from? And I said, no, I just know that it means a gathering of the people. And he said, way back when we couldn't do our ceremonies, we were forbidden until 1929 to do our, our ceremonies. And they, we used to have to all go underground. And for the Penobscot, they would go over to this man's house, powwow, wasn't said like that, just probably more like they said, wow, something like that. But to somebody else's ear, they heard powwow, but it was a gathering of the people that went over to this man's house and that's where the word powwow came from. And it's the gathering of all people for ceremony. Wow. Um, if any of you are interested in attending that, Trudy just dropped a link um, to the information that you need. So click on that. Um, our next question is from Erin. She says she would love to hear more about the portals and how they affect us and where we might find one. They're all over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You want to be careful what you ask for because sometimes it, it happens. Yeah. They're nothing to play with. Yeah, a lot of things come to those that Scare the crap out of you. <laughs> All right. And then next, um, we have a message that says, Larry, in your position as an advocate um, and work with other tribal leadership, what projects are advancing honoring tribal representation across the state? An example that is easily referred to as land acknowledgments. Yes, that's that's a new one. I've been with uh, Sundance 29 years this year, and Bob was the first to uh, begin to recognize that at the film festivals, and then it seemed to caught on from there. And uh, uh, that's a good thing. I always uh, watch who's ever reading it or saying it at whatever presentation to see if they're sincere or if they're just reading words. I mean, it's one thing to just read words. Anybody can see through that. But if you're sincere about what you're saying, then I think uh, I think uh, we've started on a good road, a good path to um, mending a lot of hurts and pain 
It's happened in the past. We didn't come from anywhere. We've always been here. So true. Um, is there any other advocacy that you've seen happening recently? Well, like tomorrow, well, I guess it's all the last couple of days here is the uh, the governor's summit with the native tribes, Utah tribes. So I'm part of a panel tomorrow to, at uh, uh, Utah Valley University. Uh, they've asked us to uh, address um, honoring elders and that type of thing. Uh, so it'll be interesting, but I'm I'm glad uh, that the Utah tribes get together and they talk and and uh, we we unite on some things that have uh, common commonality to us and uh, that that um, help us all to to bring understanding to the state. As well as the Utah, not the Utah tribes, but the Ute tribes, we all get together. And so I think more of that sort of thing where we can communicate, where we can be human. Um, uh, that's the reason why I do the library presentations so people can understand. That's why I'm talking to you today to help you understand. And so I think if there were more communication, um, then we can, we're on the right path. Uh, but unfortunately, that's one of the drawbacks with this modern technology. It allows us to see each other, but it's not quite the same as face to face, uh, but it's a beginning, it's a start. And uh, when we can come together and and talk face to face, I think is good. Uh, it's like my kids, uh, they'd rather text than talk on the phone. And I think we all got that way nowadays, but uh, I'd rather hear from them. I'd rather hear a voice and that's that's what's good about uh, uh, Zoom and these things. Yeah, I love that there's a sense of unity among tribal leadership. You all are working towards the same goal and finding common ground. I love that. Um, the next question we have says, how might you use the medicine wheel in your daily life? Well, just remember that your whole being is a pie and all those directions, all that, those first uh, illustrations, it's your mind, your body, your spirit, and your social. So all of those are part of this being and to just keep it in mind that when you're out there moving about that um, you have control of all of that and you you want to talk good to somebody you want to be good to everybody um, and that's all that's going to come back at you is the good stuff i love that all right do we have any more questions Cuckoo, it's been my honor then to be with you today. It's been an honor having you. I personally have learned so much. I've taken like a lot away from what you've said. Um, everyone is saying thank you in the chat. I think we're all very grateful that you were able to come today. And yeah, sure. I think my biggest takeaway, you said a line that was, all you can do is take care of your own being and let the good and bad happen around you. I love that. I'm going to think about that probably for the rest of the week. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. yeah you put, put good out, you'll get good back. I love that. And some people are asking for a link to your work. So I will send that out afterwards. If you want to just email yeah. me a good website, and I'll send it out. Sure. If you want to check out some of my films, I've got a uh, YouTube page. And that's through Native Eyes Productions. And uh, one of the projects I'm working on is called YouTube. Not YouTube, Ute 
to dot org and it's the youth tribes page that has our tribal or uh, photo archive our film archive and history and it's still in the works it's a big project <laughs> i love it i'll send those links out later um good. well our word for thank you and goodbye is one the same the way up thank you it was so wonderful meeting you i hope bye I know. <laughs>